Hey chaps, welcome to 90 plus my tuition app. Look at these farmers, they are working so hard right? What are they doing? Yes, they are cultivating crops. Why are they working so hard? They work so hard to bring an income to their family. In this chapter, we are going to learn about crop production and management. Look at these images. We have a weak plant and a weak animal. Both are looking weak because they lack energy. So, where do they get their energy from? Exactly, they get the energy from the food they eat. And where do they get their food from? Plants have the ability to synthesize their own food by a process called as photosynthesis. Animals like herbivores depend on plants for their food. Animals like carnivores depend on herbivorous animals for their food. And we humans depend on both plant and animal for our food. We have a huge population of plants, animals and humans around us. But how can we provide food for this huge population? Let's take an example. We all love apples, right? Imagine there are 20 people and everyone needs an apple each. All we have is an apple tree with 10 apples. If you are providing these apples to these people, 10 will be left without any apple which makes them feel hungry. So, how can we find a solution for this problem? We have to plant more number of apple trees which means we'll get more apples to feed the rest of the people. So, in order to provide food for a huge population, we must have regular production, proper management and proper distribution. You must have come across different types of crops in your daily life, isn't it? These crops include cereals like rice, wheat, maize, etc. Apart from that, we also have vegetables and fruits. As you know, India is a vast country with different climatic conditions, which includes temperature, humidity and rainfall. These climatic conditions vary from one region to another. These climatic conditions also lead to different seasons. But whatever be the seasons, we all need food, right? Based on this, India has two major cropping patterns that is, Karif crops and Rabi crops. Karif crops are crops that are grown in rainy season, that is, from June to September. This includes paddy, soya bean, cotton, etc. Rabi crops are crops that are grown in winter season, that is from October to March. This includes wheat, gram, mustard, etc. In order to cultivate these crops, farmers follow several activities over a period of time. These activities are called as agricultural practices. The various agricultural practices are preparation of soil, sowing, addition of manure and fertilizer, irrigation, protection from weeds, harvesting and storage. Moving to our first and the most important step that is preparation of soil. In this step, the soil is turned and loosened for easy penetration of root deep into the soil so that the roots can breathe. But how does this step help the roots to breathe? This step promote the growth of bacteria and earthworms. Earthworms are also called as friends of farmers. They help in further turning and loosening, also add humus to the soil. So, what is the importance of this step? Soil has several minerals, nutrients, water, air and microorganisms. 
Apart from that, they also have nutrients that are released from dead plants and animals. So, while turning and loosening of soil is done, these nutrients are brought to the top of the soil so that the plants can absorb them easily. Have you ever heard of tilling or ploughing? Okay, let me tell you. The process of turning and loosening of soil is called as tilling or ploughing. See, we have a plough here. As you can see, this is made up of wood and iron. But if the soil is hard, then sufficient amount of water must be added before tilling. Can you see these large crumbs that are present in the soil? These crumbs must be leveled before cultivation, that is before sowing, which leads to proper irrigation and yield. This is done with the help of a leveler. Plow. This equipment has been used since ancient times. It can be easily driven by a pair of bulls or any other animals. The main part of the plow is a long log of wood that is called as plow shaft. One end of the shaft is attached to a strong triangular strip that is called as plow share. It has a handle and other end of the shaft is attached to the beam that are placed in the neck of the bull. One pair of bulls can easily pull this equipment. This is a hoe. It is a simple equipment that is used for removal of weeds and for loosening of soil. It also has a long rod of wood. One end is attached to a strong broad plate of iron that acts as blade. This is also pulled by animals. But the technology has replaced both plow and hoe with tractor driven cultivators. It saves time and labor. After all these agricultural practices, our field is now ready for sowing. But before sowing, let's check the quality of our seeds. So, how can we identify whether our seeds are of good quality or not? For that, let's perform an experiment. First, put the seeds into the beaker. Add one cup of water to the beaker. Can you guys see a few seeds that are floating? Yes, they are the damaged seeds. The damaged seeds are hollow and lighter, thus floating in water. So friends, try this experiment at your home with rice, wheat or gram. This is the best method to check the quality of the seeds. Like ploughing, sowing also requires specialized tools. The traditional tool that is used for sowing look similar to the funnel. The seeds are filled in the funnel. One end of the funnel is connected to two or three pipes with sharp ends. These ends pierce deep into the soil and places the seeds there. But the modern technology has replaced this traditional tool with a seed drill. The seed drills are also driven by tractors. The seed drills places the seeds uniformly at equal distances and depth. It also ensures that the seeds are covered with soil after sowing to protect the seeds from birds. The usage of seed drills saves time and labor. Champs, have you ever thought why the seeds are placed in equal distances? It is to avoid overcrowding of the crops so that the crops can get enough nutrients, water and sunlight. Now, our soil is prepared and sowed. It's time for us to add manures and fertilizers. The manures and fertilizers are added in the form of nutrients for enrichment of the soil. This process is called as manuring. Have you ever thought why the farmers are adding manures and fertilizers to the soil even if the soil has its own nutrients? It is because when crops are cultivated continuously, the soil loses its nutrients. 
by addition of manure and fertilizers, the soil regains its nutrients. Now, let's see how manure is prepared. Can you see these people? They are dumping plant and animal waste into this open pit. And then, they left this pit undisturbed. During these days, the microorganisms act on this plant and animal waste and decomposes them to manure. How are fertilizers different from manure? Fertilizers are rich in nutrients and are synthesized in industries. The major fertilizers are urea, NPK, sulfate, phosphates, etc. By adding fertilizer to the soil, we will get high yield. But when excess fertilizer is added, we lose the fertility of the soil, which also lead to water pollution. So, you can imagine how pathetic is the situation of our soil and water bodies. In order to maintain the fertility of the soil, the fertilizers must be replaced with manure. Addition of manure not only increases the texture of the soil but also improves the water holding capacity. Apart from that, we have another option that is to leave the field uncultivated in between two crops. But few farmers in North India practice a new process that is called as crop rotation. This is the process in which two crops are grown alternatively. They mostly use leguminous plants that has nitrogen fixing bacteria in their roots. Have you ever felt thirsty while roaming a long day in sun? Exactly. So, what about plants? Plants also dry up because of dehydration. Hey wait, what is dehydration? Dehydration is the process by which plant or animal loses water because of the lack of uptake of water. So, how do these plants stay hydrated? We have to provide them with enough water. Do you think seeds can germinate without water? No, seeds need water for germination and they cannot germinate under dry conditions. So now, you must have understood the reason for watering the plant regularly. Fields are watered regularly not only to maintain the moisture content of the soil but also to promote the growth of the plants. The process of watering the fields at regular intervals is called as irrigation. Irrigation varies from soil to soil, season to season, crops to crops. We all love going for a picnic, isn't it? And what if a picnic spot is near to a dam, a river or a lake? It would be wonderful, right? And you know what? These are the major source of water bodies that are used for irrigation. Apart from that, we also have wells, tubers and canals. The traditional method that is used for irrigation include the moat which is also called as the pulley system, the chain pump, Degli and Rahat. But the modern technology has replaced these traditional systems with drip system and sprinkler system. First, let's learn about the sprinkler system. In this system, the water moves to the main pipes and the subpipes under pressure. This water oozes out through the rotating nozzles. This can be compared to that of the rain so that the plants get enough water. It is mostly used for coffee plant. But in the drip system, the pipes are near to the root of the plant so that the water falls drop by drop near each roots. This is a brilliant method and it can be used in areas with water scarcity. You can see a rose plant near me. Let's look closer. Can you see some undesirable plants along with our rose plant? These undesirable plants are called as weeds. 
These weeds are also found along with our crops. Do you think these weeds can affect our crops? Yes, these weeds consume minerals, water, nutrients, space and light that are required for the sufficient growth of our crops. Since the weeds are harmful for our crops, they must be removed. The process of removing of weeds is called as weeding. Weeding can either be performed manually or by using chemical methods. The manual methods for weeding includes hand and also by the usage of kurpi. The chemicals that is used for weeding are weedicides. Weedicides are not harmful for our crops, but they are harmful for the farmers if they inhale it. So, in order to protect themselves from the weedicides, the farmers wear masks. And when is the best time to use the weedicides? Weedicides must be used before the seeding or flowering of the weeds. So, champs, look at our field. Our crops are fully grown and it's time for us to harvest. Harvesting can be done by using a sickle. While using a sickle, the crops must be cut near to the ground. Harvesting can also be done with the help of a harvester. The next step after harvesting is called as threshing. Can you see the farmers beating a bunch of harvested crops to the ground? This process is called as threshing. During threshing, the grains are removed from the chaff. In order to save time, and labor, both harvesting and threshing are done together with the help of a combine. Look, our farmers are having tons of grains with them. So, now we have to protect and keep them safe from moisture, insects, rats and microorganisms. To protect them, they must be dried first. The dried grains are stored in jute bags or metallic bins in godowns. The large scale storage of these dried grains are in silos or in granaries. In this chapter, we had learned a lot about cultivation of crops, harvesting and much more. But are plants the only providers of food? No, apart from plants, we have milk, meat, egg, etc. These are not plant derived but are animal derived. The field of agriculture that deals with breeding, farming and taking care of animals is called as animal husbandry. So, we have come to the end of this chapter. I hope you guys have enjoyed this session. We will meet again with yet another interesting chapter very soon. Till then, goodbye.